Hello, in this section we're going to learn about a really, really useful function of this calculator and that is the ability of this calculator to convert between fractions and decimals and then back again uh, from decimals back into fractions. And I have to say, you know, this is probably one of the coolest features of this calculator for everyday use. And both of these functions are wrapped up here in the math menu and they're the very first items you see right here under the math part. Uh, the first one is telling you the little triangle means convert to. So you'll convert a number to a fraction and if you go down here to the second entry it's if you're converting a a, um, a fraction that you've already typed in into a decimal and they're very very easy things to, to use and so to show you how to do that let's just get out of here let's say uh, take something everybody knows 0 0.5 that's a number that everybody knows so if you put that number right here in in the in the calculator and then go to the math menu and in the very first item um, the triangle to fraction it means convert to a fraction so if I hit enter here then you see what it's put up on here on the screen. It says 0 0.5. What I'm asking the calculator to do, take 0 0.5 and convert to a fraction. That's what the arrow means, turn it into a fraction. And I do that and one half pops out. Uh, obviously that's a, that's a pretty easy fraction. Let's, let's take something else, 0 0.25. I'll go off to the math menu, hit number one here, uh, hit enter. And I'm telling it, okay, convert 0 0.25 to a fraction. Okay, it gives me one fourth. That's pretty neat. Let's try something else. 0 0.125. Some of you out there might know what fraction that is, but some of you may not. So we're going to go ahead and convert it to a fraction. Now let me show you something here in the math menu. You can hit enter here, but you can also press any of these numbers here before the colon and that's going to automatically pull the function off that you want. So let's go ahead and type number one here just to show you. And it does the same thing. It sticks the uh, fraction thing out there. So let's turn this into a fraction. We come up with one eighth. Now that's pretty neat. I think everybody would agree. Now let me show you something even neater than that. Let's say you're doing, let's take something easy. Let's say you're taking uh, one fourth. So I'm going to put that in my calculator and this is the fraction one fourth. Now if I hit enter right now, it's going to turn up with 0 0.25 because that's, that's what one fourth is. But let's clear that. Let's say one fourth and we want to add to that another one fourth. So think in your head, one fourth of a pie plus one-fourth of a pi. When you do the fraction uh, addition, you should get um, two-fourths, right? Two-fourths of a pi, which reduces to one-half. So you should have half of a pi. So if I hit the button now, all that's going to happen is this is going to convert to 0 0.25. This is going to convert to 0 0.25. And it's going to stick out 0 0.5 for the answer, which is what you would kind of expect from most normal calculators. But if I put one-fourth in here and I add another one-fourth, to this fraction, but instead if I go to the math menu now and go ahead and click on fraction here, then it's going to evaluate this and try to convert the answer back to a fraction and it's going to spit out one half. Now the notice the thing that's really neat about this is that it already does the fraction simplification. So if you're not so good with fractions, I mean I always encourage everybody to really learn your fractions because it's going to help you, but you can do a tremendous amount of work with fractions directly in your calculator here. Let's go and take something a little bit harder. Uh, one fourth plus one half. And I think everybody would, would realize or know that that's three fourths. Let's see what the calculator does. Let's convert it to fraction. And that should come out to three fourths. And it does come out to three fourths. Now these are pretty easy fractions we're doing here. Let's try something a little bit harder. What about one fourth plus one fifth? Now, for those of you with fractions, you, you would know you have to find the common denominator. Uh, you know, that's going to end up changing these numerators. Then you'll add the numerators. Your common denominator is going to be over 20. And then you'll have to re simplify the fraction that, that you get at the end. And then you'll have the answer. But with the calculator here, you can just send it straight over to a fraction. And then, boom, out comes the answer, 9 twentieths. And that's because the common denominator you'd have to get would be 20. And so it's just a huge, huge time saver. And you can do this with any kind of fraction thing. Let's say you want to do, uh, you know, 1 fifth times 9 eighteenths, right? And uh, you know how to multiply these guys. You multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. But let's just say you want to get a quick and dirty answer. Boom, 1 tenth comes out. It's a tremendous time saver. And you can do it with any kind of thing. You could, you could take uh, 1 eighth, right? You can take that fraction and square it. And then you can uh, subtract from it 
uh, four fifths, let's say, and um, uh, you can raise that to the negative one power. And let's go off to the math menu and send that to a fraction. And let's see what it does. Negative 79 64, right? So it, it does all of this really quickly and easily, and it converts it back into a fraction base. Now, the other neat thing in the math menu is it can convert back and forth between uh, between decimals and fractions. So if I know, you know, uh, let's say I have the uh, the fraction. Uh, well, this is an easy fraction, but one half. I can hit enter, but I can also go to the math menu and tell it to convert that directly to a decimal and it'll just spit one half. So if you're working with fractions and you want to convert the answer to a decimal, you can do it this way or you can just you know put the fraction into the calculator like this and hit enter uh, and convert it like that. Now let me show you one really really neat thing that you can do with this guy. Uh, a lot of times you're not really sure um, about repeating decimals. So we talked about you could convert decimals to fractions. Well let's take one like this. Let's look at uh, 0. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. That's a repeating decimal. Right? Now let's try to convert that to a fraction and see what it does. Convert to fraction. Hit the button. And in this case it was not able to do it. Okay, now sometimes it's able to do it and sometimes it's not able to do it. And you're just going to have to, uh, to it's going to depend on, on the actual number that you put in here. 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5. And let's go ahead and see if it'll do this one here. To a fraction. And in that case, it was able to. 125 over 999. That's something that would be, you know, you'd have to play around with that a while to figure out that that was the proper fraction. And you can check that. 125 divided by 999. And the answer is going to be roughly what you typed in. So a lot of repeating decimals, it will, uh, it will be able to do. Now let me show you one that it won't. If you put in, you know, a bunch of repeating threes, most of you know that that's equal to uh, the fraction one third, but if you go ahead and convert it to fraction, uh, it's not going to work out. It's just going to spit the decimal back at you. So the bottom line is when you're converting decimals back into fractions, if it's a uh, a finite decimal like you know point one two, it can definitely do those. It can definitely convert any um, any decimal that does not go on forever and ever back into a fraction, no problem. When they begin to repeat and go on forever, sometimes it can convert them and sometimes it can't. You just have to give it a shot. Um, in this case, if we take one third and divide it, and we get the answer here, right? It's showing us this many decimal places, but the calculator is actually keeping a much much longer number of decimals in its memory. So I can take the last answer here, and I can convert the last answer to a fraction, which was the division I just did. So these threes, let's convert that back to a fraction and it's going to spit one third out. So when you're converting from decimals back into fractions, it'll definitely do it if it's a finite decimal. If it's an infinite repeating decimal, you know, like you know, 0 0.85858585, 85, let's see. Uh, let's see if it'll do something like that. In that case, it won't. So sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. So you really don't really know ahead of time what it's going to be able to do. But a lot of repeating decimals it will be able to do uh, and some it won't. So that's a great little tool for you to use on a test. If you're, if you're not really sure how to find a common denominator with a fraction, um, you know, I mean, I think it's a really important skill for everybody to know. But if you get stuck, you can always put it in here and it should be able to simplify the answer for you.